Hey everyone, this is FaZe and welcome to my channel. Apple launched the M4 iPad Pro back in May and I've been using this 13 inch model ever since as my main full-time computer. I like literally have not touched my MacBook Pro at all in the past three months. Well, except for this one time where I needed to get a task done that the iPad just didn't allow me to do. So I'll talk about that experience of mine later in this video. And also I've been using this iPad Pro with iPadOS 18 for the past two months. So I'm gonna go over that experience as well. And if you saw my initial review and all the other videos that I've done for the iPad Pro, then you probably know I really love this device. It's officially my computer of choice. It's not perfect. It does have its shortcomings, but overall, I really, really do love it. And in this video, I'm gonna go over all the things that I love and ways that Apple can improve the overall experience. So without any further ado, let's begin. So first things first, let me just say, that I know that this iPad is not a great computer for everyone and not everyone can replace their Mac or their laptop of choice with the iPad Pro. Some software is Mac only and in other cases, iPad OS does have some constraints that really stops people from using this as their full blown machine. For my work as a graphic designer and digital marketer, the iPad is great. I love the one app at a time approach of iPad OS because it helps me focus better. And since I create a lot of content, it's nice to just touch the screen and maneuver around the display with just my finger or the Apple Pencil. It's more of an immersive experience. You know, I'm going to give an analogy and it may not make sense at first, but just hear me through. What the Apple Vision Pro is to the iPad is what the iPad is to the MacBook. And I think that allows the device to also be quite versatile. And not that the Mac isn't a great device, it's a great computer, but I feel like this is more versatile, it's more modern, and it's a much more immersive experience overall. And thanks to the all new Tandem OLED display, everything is brighter, sharper, and more vibrant than ever before. It's a beautiful display and watching content on here is pure joy. I remember back in May of this year, um, I got the iPad Pro and the iPad Air, and I was simultaneously reviewing both of them. When I first got this iPad Pro, I thought, yeah, sure, it's a brighter display, but it's not anything groundbreaking, right? And uh, when I would go back and pick up the iPad Air to review, I would really miss the, the display on this because that's when I realized how beautiful this display really is. Once you get used to it, it's almost hard to go back to something else. Now, when I use the iPad Air, it's almost like I, I miss this. I really do miss this display. It is, like I said, brighter and the contrast ratio is fantastic. The colors are so nice. It's just a beautiful display overall. And when you're using this as your main computer and you're also viewing content, it's beautiful and it's pure joy to be viewing content on this screen. I will go as far as to say that this is one of the best displays that Apple has ever shipped. Now let's go back to productivity for a second. I like how I can get some serious work done when the iPad is attached to the Magic Keyboard and this new Magic Keyboard is absolutely amazing. And I really, really like it. It's a lot lighter and the form factor is not as bulky as it was for the previous ones. And it's not just about it being lighter and less bulky. It also has other great improvements that provides you with a much better experience. For example, I love this new aluminum surface, the larger glass trackpad and the function row keys. It brings it closer to a laptop-like experience. Like it almost feels like this should have been here from day one, but I'm glad Apple finally brought it because it does enhance the overall experience. However, when I don't wanna use it for work and don't need the keyboard, I love how I can just detach the iPad from the keyboard and just use it as a tablet where I can sit back and relax and watch my favorite shows, read books, browse social media, and just enjoy more casual tasks. And now more than ever before, the 13 inch model has become my favorite model because not only do you get a much larger display, but the device itself is drastically thinner and lighter. So the iPad itself does not feel cumbersome to hold. In fact, it's Apple's thinnest product ever. And like I said, it's much lighter, so it's much more natural to use even with just one hand. Now, when I'm doing work, I usually like to immerse myself with the full screen app itself. However, I keep a handful of other apps close at hand when I'm using Slide Over, like for example, Safari, Teams, Messages, Notes, etc. This enables me to eliminate visual distractions and focus on my work while still having quick access to my tools. Yes, on the Mac, you also can have the full screen app experience, right? But you don't get slide over. Plus for those who do enjoy viewing multiple apps and resizing them based on their preferences, you do get Stage Manager as well. Personally, I'm not a huge fan of Stage Manager. There's nothing really, you know, 
wrong with it, um, but I'm just not a huge fan of it. I like the full app screen uh, experience. And of course I use slide over. And of course I can have two apps side by side as well, which is also very nice. However, there is one mistake I made when I was purchasing this iPad Pro. And it's the fact that I didn't go for the 5G cellular version. Um, I work remotely. I'm also traveling a lot. So I'm completely reliant on a steady Wi-Fi connection. And unfortunately, you may not get Wi-Fi everywhere or it may not be a steady Wi-Fi connection. It would be much more convenient if I could just, you know, use 5G on this. And even if I'm going on a road trip and my friends are driving and I, you know, just want to do some computing, I can do it without needing to, you know, get my phone out, which once again, you can do that. It's just not as convenient and you always don't get that steady connection. And of course, if you compare it to a Mac, a Mac doesn't even have a cellular option. So this is one big competitive advantage that the iPad Pro has over the MacBook. Now let's go over performance. When Apple announced that the all new iPad Pro was getting the M4 chip, I was genuinely surprised. You see the M2 chip on the previous generation iPad Pro was no slouch. In fact, till this day, it is a very powerful chip for an iPad. In fact, performance in general has never really been an issue on the iPad. These devices keep getting faster chips, but at the end of the day, I don't really think it makes a huge impact on the overall usage. Like for example, when I'm editing videos on the M4 chip, I can, I, I've noticed that it renders a few seconds faster than the M2 iPad Pro. But once again, it's just a few seconds faster. It's something that you can live without. It's not a night and day difference. When you're doing basic computing or just content consumption in general, you're really not going to tell a difference between the M4 iPad Pro and the M2 iPad Pro. So if the performance is a reason why you're thinking about upgrading, then you should probably hold back on that. And especially for the kind of work that I do, the M4 chip is pretty overkill. In fact, I think the M4 chip is pretty much overkill for most people. And once again, for those who do heavy graphics related work, the M4 chip is probably very useful for them. But for most people, I don't think they're going to notice a difference. Now, earlier in this video, I talked about how I've religiously been using the iPad Pro as my main computer for the past three months. Having said that, I also said that there was one incident where I just wanted to get a task done and I couldn't um, get it done on the iPad. So I had to revert back to my MacBook Pro for that. And that is that on PowerPoint, I had to edit a master slide deck um, for a client. So I opened up the PowerPoint app and I was looking at the slide deck, but there was no option for me to edit the master slide. And I kind of, you know, was digging around PowerPoint. I just couldn't do it. So I thought, okay, maybe that's a app constraint. Let me go on the browser version of PowerPoint and maybe I can do it there. Unfortunately, even on the browser version of PowerPoint, there was no way for me to edit the master slide deck. And I was kind of uh, terrified by that because I really had to get this, uh, you know, task done for a client and I just couldn't get it done on my iPad. I literally went on the internet, went on a you know, ton of different forums and threads, and I just couldn't figure it out. And I basically found out that you can't edit a master slide deck on PowerPoint on the iPad. And uh, that got me very nervous because I'm trying to use this as my you know, main machine. And here I'm trying to do something that I find to be quite a basic task, and I can't. That kind of scared me because what if I was traveling and I had to get something done for a client, and I didn't have my Mac on me, what would I do? I would be screwed. So I'm glad that luckily I was at home. I had my MacBook. I got that master slide deck edited for my client and you know, sent it on time. Now, I don't know if that's a Microsoft constraint or an iPadOS constraint. Clearly, I don't think you know, iPadOS would be limiting you to edit a master slide deck um, because of course it's got the powerful M4 chip. It's totally capable of doing that. So maybe it's the app developers that are not taking full advantage of the iPad experience and what it's capable of. Um, so hopefully over time, app developers take advantage of the chip and the processing power of this machine. Once again, it does terrify me to say that, yes, you can go fully all in on the iPad because you sometimes can't. Um, but anyways, that, that's just the one time that I had to go back to a Mac. Other than that, I've been, I've been using this with zero issues. But speaking of iPadOS, I have been using iPadOS 18 on this iPad Pro for the past couple months. And it's a decent upgrade, but it's not something that's going to completely change the game at all. Yes, now you can pin your apps anywhere on the home screen. You can have dark mode applied to the app icons. You finally get a calculator and the Notes app has gotten smarter. But essentially, it's just small updates to iPadOS. And I feel like 
iPadOS 18 isn't really taking full advantage of the M4 chip. Now, what I haven't tested on this iPad Pro is Apple Intelligence, but the future of Apple Intelligence is keeping me very, very excited. I feel like when it comes to productivity, it's going to be super cool to be working on documents and emails and having them enhanced by Apple Intelligence, proofreading them and even rewriting them to make it sound a certain way. That's really, really cool. Like currently I use ChatGPT to enhance some of my you know, verbiage on documents and stuff like that. But the fact that Apple Intelligence is gonna be built in to all of the native apps on the iPad, that's amazing. And that's just Apple, just introducing Apple Intelligence. Just think about the future and how smarter these devices will become with Apple Intelligence and just AI in general. Also, as a graphic designer, I'm really excited to see how Apple Intelligence can create images based on concepts that I draw. Siri is also going to be a lot more powerful and useful. We're finally headed in that direction where you can just input certain commands and the device can do that for you. I mean, it can do that right now with ChatGPT and stuff, but on a more creative level, that's gonna be very, very cool to see. So what I'm thinking when it comes to the M4 chip is that Apple is trying to future-proof this device with the M4 chip because AI tasks can put some serious demands on the chip. So perhaps future iPadOS releases will be able to handle all of it at ease. And I feel like M4 is basically here to help with AI and I'm all in for that. But overall, I love my iPad Pro and I love the iPadOS experience and I can't wait till all the iPadOS 18 features are uh, out later this year. And obviously with Apple Intelligence, I think the overall experience of using this is gonna go next level. Now, is it a perfect device? No. Um, is it gonna be a computer for everyone? No, but for most people, I do think this will be a great machine. And like I said, it's super versatile. So this is not just for productivity. It's also a great tablet. And I think people forget that sometimes. This is almost like a, like a two-in-one sort of a device. When I'm traveling, I can get work done on this and I can just use it for leisure stuff. And that's what I love about it. It's super portable and uh, the display is gorgeous and not just consuming content, but even creating content on this is pure joy. But at the end of the day, what are your thoughts? What are your questions? Leave them down in the comment section below. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so, and I'll see you next time.